All right, so this could be really good, or this could be like, okay, if you know what I mean. So I saw this listed, and I had to open it this way so you crack maniacs don't show up at my door. And, uh, yeah, so I saw it listed, and I, I hesitated. I was like, yeah, I don't know. It looks like one of those mass-produced Chinese things that were made to look antique. And it had, like, a buy it now for 20 And I was, like, hemming and whoring over it. Is that the word? Is that is that even a word, hemming? Ow, shit, I just stabbed myself. Uh, hemming and whoring over it. And I was like, I don't know. And then I started doing more research from the seller's horrible pictures, by the way. And then I realized it might be something more significant. And it's not Chinese, okay? All right, so let's go ahead and if I can get this damn thing open. I'm making like a trap door. Okay, it seems like it's packed well so far. All right, that's a good thing. Let's check out and see what we got here. I'm going to go very gentle. All right, so at first I thought it was a mass produced Chinese cloisonne, like little box. And then I started looking at it more and more, and I was like, wait a minute. Mmm. Something looks really, really special about this. And the seller really didn't say much. She just said enamel box, silver, possibly silver. And then I noticed in the picture and I blew it up. And I'll show you. I blew it up because I was like, wait a minute, that's not silver. Let me just find out where the lid is. How do, okay. I noticed something inside of there. Let's see if uh, I could show you. And I blew it up on my computer and blew it up like 600 times and tried to see what this said. And it says S, I believe it says S, hold on, S925 with a logo of some kind of like jewelry maker. And I was like, oh yeah, this is something really good. And then I realized this is called, I'm gonna get it wrong. It's a French term, plique du jour, plique, plique du jour, hold on. Hold on. All right. We've got to get in better lighting. Plique du jour. It's almost like Closine. It's almost like Champlevé, but it's glass. Okay? So it's almost like a stained glass type of look. And the light goes through each cell that we have this uh, glass, this glass work in between each wire. And I was like, yeah, this is actually really old. Uh, circa 1890s to 1900, and it's Norwegian. Yes. There was a lot of Norwegian jewelers, one especially by the name of Marius Hammer, I believe. And actually, we'll go ahead, we'll find out more about, oh crap, more about Plique Azur from the Antiques Roadshow. I don't want to, yeah, I don't want to mess this thing up. This is in phenomenal condition. All right, let's go ahead. We'll go segue over to the Antiques Roadshow about Plique du Jour or Plique Azur. I really don't know very much about the piece. My mother inherited it 60 years ago from a dear friend. Well, first of all, on the bottom, we have the mark 930, which is a Norwegian standard for silver. So the base of this is silver. We also have another mark on here, and it's M Hammer. And this stands for Marius Hammer of Norway. Marius Hammer is the most important silversmith in Norway. He was a contemporary of Fabergé. This piece is a plique azure piece made to look like a stained glass. This particular piece was made circa 1900. And when these were originally made and sold in Norway, they were only sold to the wealthy. You happen to have one that has horses' heads. Usually they'll have a dragon or some other more common feature. The horses' heads are the rarest. It's a bowl shape. The interior is red guilloche enamel and 
the value of this piece in today's market, we're in a little bit of slump in the market. So this is a conservative retail price would be $7,000. Oh, great. Unbelievable. Oh, my goodness. Oh, that is swelling. So we're taking it outside to see it in the light and it's just absolutely stunning in the light now is it marius hammer i highly doubt it but i think it was made by another norway Nor or norwegian like metal maker or metal worker by the name of anderson i'm going to check it out we're going to do some research we're going to find out what is a box like this worth 925 sterling silver wires going throughout it the plica jaw and uh yeah the light just like goes through it I can't really show you because I'm filming with one hand and filming with the other. I take the lid off, but uh, we can see, look at that. Look at that gorgeous. It's like a jewel or a stained glass jewel, like absolutely stunning. Okay, so mine we know now is Norwegian, okay? Is it Marius Hammer? Probably not, but from around the same time, a contemporary uh, jeweler or metal worker. Here's an example of a small little, a small tiny little plica jaw beaker. A thousand fifteen dollars okay that's like absolutely insane but these are actually scoring big money on the internet all right uh, let's keep going and here's a little box plica jour Austrian it's not Norwegian but two thousand seven hundred and ninety five dollars nine hundred sterling sil silver Teen this is like teeny tiny like two inches uh, let's keep going now it could have been made by many different makers here's a brooch by Johan, uh, can't pronounce the last name, Gerland, a sterling silver plique jour enamel brooch, and it's Norwegian, $599 for a teeny tiny brooch. Now, David Anders Anderson was another, another such maker, and this is a salt cellar with a spoon, $850. Here's another. Let's keep going. Now, here's an Austrian uh, example of a plique azure enamel sterling silver snuff box 800 doll hairs and let's keep going now i mean it's like really interesting to find out what these things are worth here's an early 20th century norwegian 930 now a lot of the norwegian pieces were marked 930 but there were that were marked 925 this is marius hama and this is really beautiful circa 1910 and it sold for three thousand is that sterling pounds which would be more money in u.s dollars the plica jour little enamel cup and saucer circa 1895 again made by marius hama which is is actually who i don't think we have um it could be i mean i don't know this is see how it's marked with the s so they marked it I, I do notice that the norwegians put an s in front of the silver content really interesting but these are just quite beautiful i mean absolutely gorgeous let's continue to look and okay objects of norwegian um no leave me alone hold on a minute yeah skip all tips go away objects of norwegian pleak azure signed m hammer and yeah it's not going to tell me how much because they want my information, not giving it, and I'm not paying them. Oh, uh, let's continue to check out. Maybe they'll let us see prices. They're real bastards. Sold for one thousand two hundred dollars. Estimate four to six hundred. Norwegian silver gilt plique jour box, and this one by Marius Hammer. And what what did it sell for again? Twelve hundred dollars. Okay, and this is a teeny tiny little box. And there's going to be no price on this really highfalutin website. It's sold though. And this is a Norwegian silver and gilt plique azure enamel spoon, circa 1920. And I don't see a price anywhere, sadly. But uh, this one is Marius Hammer. And he made quite a bit of things. Um, here we go. First dibs. If my, yeah, there we go. My computer's a little slow. Unknown. Antique plique azure beaker. 1,500 doll hairs. Now, when we say beaker, this thing is tiny. All right. Let's continue to go. Uh, 1,500 doll hairs. Oh, my goodness. Here we go. Norwegian plique azure enamel and glass box. And when it says inquire, you know you can't afford it. Uh, yeah. 
you definitely can't afford it. It's on one of those highfalutin websites. That's why they want you to inquire because, oh, and it sold. Okay, it did sell. And uh, what, did it, what it sold for, I guess we will never know. Let's look at more shiz. Here we go. Antique Plique Azure. No, Ruby Lane. I used to sell on you. I, just leave me alone. Antique Plique Azure Enamel Heart Trinket Box, 900 silver. Uh, flower and Clover, 2,499 doll hairs. This is a little, tiny, little, I'm, I'm not kidding you, a little trinket box, teeny tiny, like the box that I just got. You can see it next to the size of a quarter. $2,499. Okay, so I think my box is absolutely exquisite. Really, I mean, unbelievably exquisite. Let's go ahead and look at the details. Look at that. Look at the trim. Look at the wires. The wires are silver, 925. And look at, look at the little cells. Look at the little cells with the glass. I mean, look how it, it's, a, oh my God, the, the light just goes through it. Now, it's very dark in my house right now. If it was really brighter out, we could really see this. But yeah, I would say a conservative value on my box is between 600 to $2,000. Okay, we do not know who the maker is. We could figure it out by looking it up. There is a mark, a maker's mark. Don't know if it's Marius Hammer, doubt it, but it could be another one of those Norwegian Fabergé style plique jour makers who was a metalsmith or a jeweler. And uh, yeah, I'm going to say with a conservative estimate. Now, if I was to sell this on a wretched site like eBay, where the antiques that sell on that site uh, sell for, I'm not kidding you, at least 50 to 70% of their like estimated value, I wouldn't even bother. Because the most I could probably get on there is about three to four hundred dollars. Not bothering, but this was a great score at nineteen dollars and ninety nine cent. Buy it now with like eight dollars shipping. Okay, so no, it was like five something, and then with taxes, it came out to twenty eight dollars and ninety five cents. This was a really great score. Now I'm so glad I was gonna pass this box by because I honestly I thought this was Chinese, very cheap, close in a. Chinese mass-produced boxes. I'll, I'll actually I'll show you an example really quick. But it was like one of these, okay? And yeah, let's go on the site and check it out. I swear to God, I thought it was one of these, and I was like, yeah, forget it. Okay, this is Chinese. This is actually some of them are from the early 20th century, some of them are mid-century, and some of them are now. Uh, generally, you'll see blue enamel on the insides of them, and I immediately I was like, yeah, nah. But yet it I'm not buying it it's Chinese it's a uh, cheap shiz and yeah thank God I just like something told me to investigate it further as I investigated it further I noticed what the seller did it notice the s925 and the jewelers marking on the inside of this box which led me to do more research yes and I, I, I sat there for a good 30 minutes before I hit the buy it now like a schmuck uh, somebody else that was more versed in this could have grabbed this treasure right out from underneath me and thank god it was still there uh, after i was satisfied that it wasn't some cheap chinese mass-produced piece of shiz uh close in a box and i bought it and yeah it was a lucky score and how long did it take me to find this about eight to nine hours of scouring ebay listings not even looking for plique azur just looking for certain boxes that i collect and luck was on my side. Lady Luck was shining down on me that night. Thanks so much for watching. And now we all learn something. Don't get those cheap mass-produced Chinese ones. They're crap. And then you'll be sorry because it'll be only worth like 18 doll hairs.